drama. It's why we sink ourselves in a comfy couch and binge the newest Netflix series. It's why many of us are such huge Bachelor fans. This promises to be the most dramatic season yet. This is why we love reality TV shows and social media. We get the scoop on everybody else's life. This is why we like to go out and drink, so we can lower our inhibitions and maybe, just maybe, there'll be a juicy story that produces from the night. It's why we read books about murder, secret love trysts, stories about fatal love attractions. The stories that we have fallen in love with are all involved in some kind of drama. Many of us have a proclivity to it, and maybe it's more enjoyable when it's happening to those around us. That's the time we get our popcorn and start watching uh, somebody else's life like it's a movie. However, drama is addictive. If it's all around us, it's very possible that it will also enter our lives. It's quite possible that it will enter your relationship, or it already has. What is a relationship with no drama? Some would say it's boring. Others would say that it's stable. Which one are you? Are you able to be happy in a relationship with low drama, or do you need drama to fill the passion and the spark? Hello, Moodlings. My name is Dr. Nicole Lunan, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of MoodMe, a new app that allows you to share over 400 and plus moods, emotions, and desires with your lover, thus making communication simple, fun, and super easy. Drama in a relationship by definition refers to an emotional state where one or both people in the relationship create an uncomfortable feeling through manipulation and control. Drama isn't about sincere emotion. It's a mask, a facade that covers the underlying emotion of fear, insecurity, and low self-worth. Drama is a game that we play to cause reactions out of others with a hidden intention to obtain attention to hopefully remind us that we matter. If we can cause a reaction out of somebody else, then we have to matter, right? In drama, the situation is often manipulated so that we feel justified for having the feelings that we wanna have. Drama is cyclical and repetitive chaos and unresolved conflict. It's a gossipy monster that grows bigger and bigger. The more people that get involved and speak to it, it grows bigger and laughs at us the more energy we pour into it. Drama is created from the inability to communicate directly in a healthy manner, to be vulnerable and to regulate emotions rather than just letting our, our egos to lead. Drama spikes our adrenaline and causes our bodies to be in an excited state. Therefore, it acts similar to a drug. If your nervous system is used to drama as a drug, then you will feel like you're gonna need it in your life then it's very possible that you might be a drama addict. A drama addict is hooked on the adrenaline rush of relationships and people that appear wildly exciting in their intensity. In drama-filled relationship, there's lots of intense conflict punctuated with yelling, screaming, throwing things, as well as verbal and physical abuse, frequent dramatic breakups and passionate makeups, ongoing lying and cheating, withholding of truths, betrayal of trust, emotional or physical affairs, spying on each other, not respecting each other's boundaries, and racing from the height of ecstasy to the pit of despair in an out of control, emotional roller coaster fashion. One should not confuse these drama filled activities with love. Drama addiction is so supported and even honored in our media that it has become transparent for many people. Portrayals of relationships in the movies and soap operas often involve degrees of lying, deception, affairs, and general dysfunction in far greater proportions that exist in real life. We have become programmed to think that obscene amounts of drama is the norm. For those who would rather have drama in your relationship, you aren't alone. According to psychologists, many crave drama in relationships and even in the most stable ones. Let's talk about three reasons why. Humans find drama interesting, according to psychologists. The dating process is played as a game for many, a grab at power to see who is going to be the chaser and the runner. It's filled with drama and suspense, for example, waiting to get a text back from a guy you went on a date with, guessing if he's sleeping with anybody else learning to figure out when you should or should not have sex with him. It's the unfolding of two people's stories to see if they can match and ultimately, who's going to hold the power in this game, the dating game. Maybe you get the text back from the guy that you like, but then you decide to play the game and wait two hours to text him back. Whatever the game is, games are most certainly played in majority of the dating world. However, for those sweet few who come at dating with no games, you're godsend. You're probably the ones who don't have the proclivity towards drama. But for the rest of us, we might as well be in a telenovela. 
And why do we keep playing these games? Why do we add fuel to the fire? Create more drama. Because humans find drama interesting, according to psychologists. Let's take Carrie Bradshaw off Sex and the City, for example. When she dated Aiden, who was low drama, emotionally available, she'd wake up in the night sweating, worried that there was no spark, no passion, something was missing for her. So she ran back to Mr. Big, who kept her chasing, who kept her on that emotional roller coaster, who kept her in suspense and drama. This story plays out in real life and relationships all the time. We get caught up in missing the, t the chase, the newness, the feelings of butterflies and desire. According to psychologists, drama makes us feel loved and desired. We often resort to how we acted as children to get attention, and that's crying and throwing tantrums to get attention because mom wouldn't let us have a candy bar. We acted out to get attention from the people we cared about and it worked. This behavior in an adult relationship could look like starting a fight with your partner because they've been working too much and you miss them, or ignoring your lover when they call to make them intentionally worry. Pretty much anything to get your partner's attention instead of directly communicating about your needs and desires like an adult. If busting drama has gotten the reaction you wanted out of your partner in the past, it's more than likely that you've been rewarded for your behavior. But think about how much emotional energy it costs both of you to get that attention rather than just being emotionally mature and talking about your needs and desires as an adult. Creating this kind of drama in an adult relationship is at best a sad commentary on an obviously broken communication dynamic. In addition, it wastes the most precious thing that we have, time. People tend to like drama because it creates a power shift. So we think that after we get into the relationship that the dating game and the drama is gonna come to an end because both parties have chosen each other so they can just live happily ever after. Wrong. For many, this is where the power struggle begins, a process that goes hand in hand with drama. Each partner is learning about the other's stance, boundaries, and what place they'd like to have in the relationship. If one person doesn't like the power they hold in the relationship, they will start a mini battle to see if they can capture more power. This mini battle is drama. Who has more power in your relationship? If it's balanced for both of you, then there will be little drama. However, if there's a battle for power, then that's where we're gonna see the dramatic blow-ups, the tug and pull, and attempt to find homeostasis. This is why two alphas will have more of a challenging time sharing power than a dominant and a submissive. Drama disguises itself as something we need in a relationship to feel passion. However, it's actually a self-sabotaging technique. Everyone has this imaginary glass ceiling of how high their happiness can go in life. When we feel like things are going too well, we at times subconsciously sabotage. And one of the best ways that we do this is by blocking the amount of love we get from our partner with the drama. Because we're afraid to let them in, because we feel that we are unworthy of the love on a deeper level. Sadly, drama doesn't solve conflicts. It deepens them and offers no resolve. More than likely, the drama in your relationship is filled with anxiety, fear, pain. It acts as an intricate cycle that repeats itself over and over again. Fights usually occur about the same thing. Then after the blow up happens, there's apologies said, there's a makeup session, then the trigger happens and the drama dance happens all over again. No wonder couples feel nothing changes and feel highly frustrated and helpless and out of control as a result. Whether or not we have a propensity for drama in relationships depends heavily on the way that we were brought up. Either one was brought up in a dramatic household and learned that drama was supposed to be a part of a relationship, or one was brought up in a drama-less household and learned that high drama doesn't need to be a part of a relationship. The problem is, is how we choose our partners is largely unconscious. It's rooted in our childhood and experiences that we had with our primary bonds, our caregivers, our parents, our siblings. Unconsciously, we choose partners that are acting like our caregivers to recreate the drama in our adult life. Do you know how to express yourself without dramatic and chaotic ways? Most of us don't know how to assess a conflict when we're not at the height of our emotions, not until our pot of emotions literally boil over. We have to actively learn to express our feelings when we're not in a heightened state. We can de-escalate an argument for the sake of protecting the love, protecting the bond, and wait until there's a time where you two are alone or not under any influence and open to hearing each other out. 
For example, there's a reason why humans tend to fight when drinking. Drinking lowers inhibitions, yes, but it also gives people the liquid courage to bring up conflicts that they would not dare do when they're sober. Why? Because alcohol brings us to a heightened state of emotions. It has a way of boiling all our dislikes and resentments to the surface. Maybe the only way you feel heard is if you cause a tidal wave of emotion in the other person. However, these types of volatile arguments aren't healthy and they just deepen the pain rather than solve it. So the next time you're at the height of your emotions, take a step back and breathe. Ask yourself, is this really the best time to be talking about something so challenging? Find another way to communicate when you are both calm and open. So how can we break the drama cycle in our relationship? Before pointing fingers at your partner, let's focus on ourselves. One powerful thing you can do is ask yourself if you actually like drama in your relationship. And if so, how much do you like? Do you feel like you're addicted to drama? When things get too good, do you have a nagging feeling that it's time to stir up trouble again? If yes, then ask yourself where you got this habit. Think about your family origin and dynamics. What was it like in your family household? How did your loved ones communicate with each other? How many times were you surrounded by high conflict and volatility in your family life with your siblings or your parents? And did that normalize unhealthy ways of expressing your emotions, therefore normalizing chaos and drama within your relationship life? Then go ahead and look at your past relationships. How did you handle conflict? Did you mistake intensity or the need for lust or drama for love? What did you do to promote the drama? How did you handle conflicts in yourself and your partner? What information did you withhold? What provoking remarks or behavior did you engage in? Now that you have assessed your foundation of where you learned how to communicate in your past relationships, you can begin to see a trail where drama originates from. When someone feels a need to continually create drama in their lives, in their relationships, this is often a compensation for underlying emptiness and depression in their lives. Often such people have not yet connected with their true life purpose or inner aliveness. In fact, they may only feel alive when they get that familiar adrenaline rush that lets them know that they have created another messy situation. Other people who create dramatic relationships may have successfully dealt with other addictions, but then instead transferred their need for excitement and intensity into their relationship life. So the next question would be, how is drama in your relationship actually serving you? Is it covering up something that's missing in your life? And if so, what would that be? If you are in a dramatic relationship now, you can make conscious decisions to turn down the drama. Practice expressing yourself when you're not at the height of your emotions pause before you speak, or take a break when conversations are getting a little bit too heated. You can practice by recognizing your relationship triggers. What triggers are repetitive in your relationship? What, how are these causing repetitive fights? The only person that you can control is yourself. So you can focus on regulating your emotions, taking a breath, calming down before you begin to escalate. You can begin to work with a therapist to reframe the way that you see love. That love doesn't have to be high intensity and the dramatic makeup and breakup cycle. Love can be stable. High intensity and constant fighting doesn't necessarily mean that you two love each other. It can very much mean that you're addicted to the drama in the relationship. If you take out the drama, do you think you'd still be able to love each other? to respect each other, to deeply connect to each other, to create a bond that is instead filled with pain, fear, confusion, instability, with a strong and solid loving foundation. All right, Moodlings, I hope you liked my video on drama and how it impacts your relationship. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to comment in the section below and download Move Me. It's gonna help you with communication. It makes it so much easier and simplifies something super hard like expressing your deepest feelings. All right, see you later, Moodlings.